That's kind of where I wanted to take this conversation next is how much this open thing opens things up for the New York Jets in the first round, the addition of Tyron Smith. They go out and they, uh, you know, they add a couple uh, of tackles, one through a trade, one through free agency. They sign uh, a guard as well as John Simpson. And now you're kind of in a spot where for months, Jets fans and, you know, NFL draft analysts were pretty much penciling in best offensive tackle available to the you know to the jets at pick number 10 and then you move forward from there and now you don't necessarily have to go offensive line they, i think there's still a world where they could go offensive line in the first round one because it's a good tackle class if they like one of the offensive linemen you could do that uh and you know neither morgan moses or tyron smith are your long-term answers so getting someone you feel comfortable with in this draft if that if that's who you really like that's one way to look at it and then number two you know the, the guys are going to miss time if he ends up playing 20 to 25 percent of the snaps hell that's more than will mcdonald played for you last year and it's at a at, at a valuable valuable position in offensive tackle uh but they don't have to they could go wide receiver they could take brock bowers they could move down um so the, i think what i'm most excited about with this tyron smith signing is just how many different options the Jets now have in the first round and you're not locked into, you absolutely have to, no questions about it, take an offensive lineman. There's there's a lot you could do. Yeah, that's the beauty of, beauty of the signing and really the other moves that the Jets made on the offensive line. They have the ultimate flexibility going into the NFL draft because I think that this starting five that they have right now is good enough. You could go out into the 2024 season and put this starting five on the field and feel fine about it. It's better than probably what the Giants have, I would argue. So, And it's better than what the Giants have put out on the field for the last seven years. So this is a fine starting five. Is it where you want it to be? Is it as exciting as maybe you wanted it to be? Maybe not, but it's a good starting five. And in the NFL, all you need is an average to above offensive line. Obviously, the best offenses, they thrive because they have elite offensive line play. Most teams don't. Most teams have bad offensive line play. So to get a solid starting five here with good players is good enough. And now it does open you up where in the NFL draft, yeah, you could still take an elite tackle here because of what we mentioned, injury history to guys like uh, Tyron Smith. And maybe you don't do that. Maybe you trade down now and you could take a, a tackle prospect who's got a little bit more time to grow. Maybe uh, an Amarius Mims out of Georgia. He hasn't played a whole lot in college. Maybe now he's an option. Or maybe someone like uh, a Fontenot who's guard tackle. We'll see where he plays in the NFL. Now you have the flexibility there. So there's just a lot of players that are now added to the big board for the Jets, in my opinion, because of this deal and really all the other deals that they made up front on the offensive line. And having flexibility going into the NFL draft is the ultimate goal of free agency. You want to set your team up so that you can do whatever you want in the draft and you don't have to address certain and specific positions of need. So the Jets have done a really good job this offseason. I do have to commend them. I think it's been a really solid job in free agency. And like I said, opening up flexibility in the draft is the main priority of free agency, and they've done that. So I think that Jets fans have to be pretty happy about how this uh, offseason has gone so far. Yeah, I want to pull up uh, a comment from our guy, Johnny, who chimes in and says, trade back scenario, maybe with Jacksonville, get a second round pick, draft uh, Fatanu, who you just uh, mentioned, player that can play guard or tackle, get a, a second round weapon. What are your thoughts? I think Johnny watched my mock draft this morning because that's exactly what I did pretty much. I moved back, uh, drafted Fontenau, and then picked up uh, Roman Wilson in the second round with the pick that I acquired in the move back. But I know you're a big draft guy. What's your take on Fontenau as, uh, as a prospect? I like him. I, I, I'm worried about him playing tackle because of his size. I know that he came into the NFL Combine and had some really long arms, so that kind of puts some of those concerns to rest for a lot of people. Not as much for me. I still have some concern about it. I think that it's kind of like that debate that we've had a few times with prospects in the past where it's like, they could probably be a good tackle, but they could probably step into the NFL from day one and be a really good guard. Which one would you rather have? Somebody who develops eventually into a good tackle or someone who steps in as a good guard? And that's a big question mark. So, And I think that you know, with the Jets here now having some stability at tackle, maybe you do draft him to play guard in year one and maybe after Tyron Smith retires or moves on whatever next year, then you move him to tackle. That's totally possible as well. So I like him. I think he's a good player, um, but, you know, it would definitely be in a trade down scenario. I wouldn't take him at number 10, obviously.